these are the stories making the headlines at this hour. The U.S. economy grew faster than expected by 3.3 percent in the fourth quarter of last year, with cooling inflation boosting consumer spending. The EU also sees some positive progress on inflation, leading a central bank to hold interest rates steady. As North Korea is ramping up hostility towards South Korea, U.S. officials warn that Pyongyang could take some form of lethal military action in the coming months, according to the New York Times. However, experts largely see a full-scale war as being unlikely. A lawmaker from South Korea's ruling party, Baekhyun-ji, was attacked with a rock, the second attack on a political figure in less than a month. Rival parties call for preventive measures ahead of the April general election. Good afternoon. We start in the U.S., where the economy held up much better than expected in the fourth quarter of last year, with cooling inflation boosting consumer spending. Meanwhile, the European Central Bank has once again held its interest rates steady in a sign of inflation there also easing. Lee Seung Jae has more. According to the U.S. Commerce Department on Thursday, the U.S. economy grew at a faster pace than expected, growing at a 3.3 percent annualized rate in the fourth quarter of last year. The figure beat the Wall Street consensus estimate of a 2 percent gain. The U.S. economy for all of 2023 grew at a 2.5 percent annualized pace, also well ahead of the Wall Street outlook and better than the 1.9 percent increase in 2022. The U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis said that the increase in real GDP reflected increases in consumer spending, exports, state and local government spending, non-residential fixed investment, federal government spending, private inventory investment, and residential fixed investment. The latest data from the Commerce Department also showed that U.S. consumer prices have been easing. Consumer prices in the fourth quarter of last year rose at a 1.7 percent annual rate, down from 2.6 percent in the third quarter. Core inflation came in at a 2 percent annual rate. Meanwhile, the European Central Bank decided on Thursday to freeze all three key interest rates for the third straight time after its last hike in September, keeping the benchmark deposit facility rate at 4 percent. The interest rate on the main refinancing operations and the interest rates on the marginal lending facility were also kept at a 4.50 percent and 4.75 percent respectively. ECB President Christine Lagarde said the ECB board believed any talk of cutting rates was premature given the uncertain economic outlook and risk of wage growth pushing inflation higher in the first quarter. Lee Seung Jae, Arirang News. Global oil prices were up 3 percent on Thursday, reaching their highest level since November. Amid oil supply concerns, U.S. West Texas Intermediate reached $77.36 a barrel, while Brent crude settled at $82.43. This is largely due to continuing airstrikes in the Red Sea, disrupting shipping and Ukraine's attack on Russia's energy infrastructure, including oil refineries. The recent Arctic weather also hit oil production in the U.S., supporting the rise in prices. And rising oil prices are one of the impacts caused by the conflict in the Middle East that's disrupting one of the world's major shipping routes in the Red Sea. For more on the impacts and responses to this global shipping crisis, here's our Moon Eryeon. Global shipping rates have jumped as hundreds of ships have begun to take a detour in order to avoid attacks from Houthi forces in the Red Sea. The shipping route through the Suez Canal is the shortest pathway connecting Asia with Europe and the east coast of the United States and handles roughly 12 percent of the world's annual global trade. But now ships are taking an alternative path around Africa and according to the International Monetary Fund, maritime traffic in the Suez Canal was down by more than a third so far in 2024 than the same period last year. If you look at at the travel time, which is in some respect now double, triple the time to the Eastern Met, normally it's 10 days through the canal. Now it is 18 days longer. With longer journeys, shipping rates and insurance premiums are rising. 
According to UK-based jewellery shipping consultant, the average worldwide cost of shipping a 40-foot container has more than doubled in the past month. Tesla and Volvo suspended operations at some of their European plants due to shortages of parts from Asia, while retailers such as Swedish furniture giant IKEA warned of possible delays in stock. With these rising costs, financial services company JP Morgan Chase predicted that worldwide consumer prices could rise 0.7% in the first half of the year and contribute to worsening inflation. An expert says that firms will need to monitor the situation closely and respond quickly. Changes will vary greatly depending on how much faster shipping companies deploy their ships and respond by changing network strategies again for this increased journey time. Governments are responding to different aspects of the situation in various ways. The U.S. has formed a naval coalition with the likes of Britain and France to counter threats directly in the Red Sea. South Korea, on the other hand, is focusing on rising shipping rates. During an emergency meeting to discuss exports on Thursday, the country's trade ministry unveiled its plans to implement support for firms in stages, depending on how shipping rates rise. In particular, it will be supporting SMEs by increasing designated freight space and funding 3.6 billion Korean won, or just under 2.7 million US dollars, for shared warehouses in Europe and the US. Moon Hedeon, Arirang News. South Korean tech giant LG Electronics posted its highest ever annual sales last year. The company on Thursday reported sales of around 84 trillion Korean won, or about 63 billion U.S. dollars in 2023, up 0.9% from the previous year. This is the third consecutive year that the firm's annual sales have hit a record high. The growth was on the back of strong sales of home appliances and automotive parts, which made up nearly half of overall sales. However, in terms of operating profits, LG saw an on-year decrease of 0.1 percent, which is around $2.6 billion. Moving on, the World Bank chief sees South Korea as a contributing country that can greatly support developing countries in terms of digitization. The remarks came during his trip to Seoul, marking the first time in over five years that a World Bank president has visited the country. Our economics correspondent Shin Ha Young reports. A very strong economy. That's how President Ajay Bang of the World Bank sees South Korea as a contributor to emerging economies, he said during a press conference in Seoul on Thursday. He added the Korean companies have deep expertise in various sectors from shipbuilding to chips and automobiles. Korea has gone from, you know, in 50 to 60 years, from a situation where it was devastated and had to come out from deep poverty, many challenges, foreign exchange issues, had come from that to a country that is in the top few in the world and now is a, is a bastion of knowledge and capability for development in the rest of the world. South Korea is supporting developing countries in their digital transformation by teaming up with the World Bank to share the country's digital policies and innovations, including AI, cybersecurity and its digital platform government. On Thursday, while observing a simulation of South Korea's digital twin technology, a virtual geospatial model of the real world used for urban planning and management, President Banga suggested that it could be a valuable tool for reconstruction in Ukraine and Palestine, which is expected to take place in the near future. He added that technologies including AI are South Korea's strengths as a contributor. Third, it has AI and the sensor technology. He was just looking at examples of that because that's basically sensor technology and geospatial mapping combined with AI that is producing what you just saw on the screen a little while ago. It has that ability. When you put all that together, it's very useful for what the world needs. He added that it is highly beneficial for developing countries because advances in fields such as agriculture can be made through AI and advanced technologies. Meanwhile, regarding the country's low birth rate issue, President Panga pointed out the gender pay gap as one of the reasons. We need growing populations, as you know well, in Korea, to be able to keep and sustain the future. Mm -hmm. If you don't ensure that women are compensated adequately for the burden they bear for enabling that population to grow, it leads to complexity. 
Earlier in the day, President Banga met with Finance Minister Choi Sang-mok following a meeting with President Yoon song yeol the previous day to expand the partnership between the World Bank and South Korea and foster it for the next few years. Shin Ha-yong, Arirang News. Beginning this Saturday, the law punishing the owners of large-sized businesses for accidents at their workplace will begin to affect small business owners. This as the rival parties at the National Assembly did not reach an agreement until the last minute on an extension of the grace period given to small businesses. Our National Assembly correspondent Yi shi -hu explains. Beginning this Saturday, some 830,000 small business owners or CEOs will face penalties if they don't do their best to prevent serious industrial accidents at their workplaces. This as talks after talks between lawmakers spanning days at the National Assembly did not lead to a grace period extension of the Serious Accidents Punishment Act. This would penalize businesses with 5 to 49 workers. The act was first enacted in 2021 to protect workers and customers from health risks and concerns due to preventable malpractices. It was implemented a year after in 2022, but only applied to businesses with 50 or more employees with smaller businesses given a two-year grace period. It punishes death, repetitive injuries or sickness among workers as well as customers who have used their products or services. The owners may receive either a prison sentence of a year or more or a fine of up to 1 billion Korean won or around 749,000 U.S. dollars. Owners are required to conduct yearly self-inspections to check for safety hazards. Businesses in certain industries must hire an additional safety manager. While Thursday's plenary session was the last chance for an extension according to legal deadline, it wasn't discussed nor voted upon due to clashes and opinions between parties. The PPP has been calling for an additional two-year grace period for small businesses, saying that it requires more time to prepare the safety measures that have been called for. Many small and medium-sized business owners may face closures in the worst-case scenario unless the act is suspended. Workers will also lose their jobs. The DP is calling for further measures by the government before it can agree with the extension. It's calling for the establishment of an industrial safety prevention agency as well as a related budget increase. If the act is suspended for another two years without any action taken, our industrial safety will be in the same state again even two years later. Amid the debates, President Yoon song yeol called for the Assembly's approval on an extension earlier on Thursday, stating the need to consider the situations of small business owners, his second comment of assertion since the Cabinet meeting last week. Yishihu, Arirang News. As North Korea is ramping up hostility towards South Korea, U.S. officials warned that Pyongyang could take some form of lethal military action in the coming months, according to the New York Times. However, experts largely see a full-scale war as being unlikely. Choi Min-jung reports. U.S. officials say North Korea could take some form of lethal military action against South Korea in the coming months. Quoting White House Deputy National Security Adviser Jonathan Feiner, who spoke at an Asia Society Forum on Thursday, the New York Times reported that the regime had, quote, chosen to continue going down a very negative path. Daniel Russell, a former senior official at the U.S. State Department, also said that preparation should be made for the possibility of shocking kinetic action, with the leader seemingly intent on a strike that goes beyond North Korea shelling of the South's Yeonpyeong Island in 2010. According to a report released by the conservative U.S. think tank, the Heritage Foundation, the regime could make use of nuclear weapons more easily during a crisis. It said the regime's increasing rate and diversity of missile launches shows that Pyongyang is making significant progress toward implementing a more capable and flexible nuclear strategy. The warning comes after Pyongyang recently shifted to a policy of open hostility. The North has been more aggressive with provocations this month, with the recent firing of cruise missiles in the West Sea and the test launch of what it claimed to be a new solid-fuel hypersonic intermediate-range missile. It also fired hundreds of artillery shells off its western coast earlier in the month, prompting South Korean islanders to evacuate. The North Korean leader also called for constitutional amendments to officially label South Korea as its most hostile state. 
However, despite Pyongyang's hardline approach, experts say there appear to be no concrete signs that North Korea is gearing up for a major war. A U.S. official said North Korea's alleged weapons delivery to Russia, which prevents the regime from stockpiling arms, could be a sign that Kim is not planning for a major military operation. Choi min Arirang News. Foreign ministry officials from China are in North Korea as the two sides continue diplomatic exchanges. According to the North State Round Lorong Shimon on Friday, a Chinese delegation led by Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs Sun Wei Dong arrived in Pyongyang the day before. South Korea's Unification Ministry said the visit is likely an extension of diplomatic talks between North Korea and China that took place in Beijing last month. The ministry added various discussions will take place during Sun's visit, as this year marks the 57th anniversary of North Korea and China establishing diplomatic relations. Song Kim, the former U.S. ambassador to South Korea, will be honored with the 2024 New American Hero Award. Since the year 2000, the American-Korean Friendship Society has recognized Americans of Korean ancestry who have contributed to the U.S. and made the immigrant community proud. The AFKS said Kim's passionate and remarkable services for the U.S. have enhanced the status of Korean and Asian immigrant society. Song Kim served as the U.S. Special Envoy for the six-part talks by George W. Bush in 2008 and the ambassador to Korea from 2011 to 2014, then to the Philippines and to Indonesia. An official award ceremony will take place on March 15th in Atlanta, Georgia. South Korea's ruling party lawmaker Pei Jin was attacked with a rock on Thursday, the second attack on a political figure in less than a month. Rival parties call for preventive measures ahead of the April general election. Shin se reports. People Power Party lawmaker Pei Jin was struck on the head with a rock by an assailant on Thursday evening in Seoul. According to Ben's office, the 41-year-old was immediately taken to a hospital and remains in a stable condition. Pei, a formal television news anchor, briefly served as then-president-elect Yoon song yeols spokesperson in 2022. The suspect, who said he is 15 years old, was arrested by police at the site. The motive behind the attack is not yet known. Early on Friday, the assailant was placed in emergency hospital care, accompanied by a guardian. This is an action that can be taken by individuals believed to have mental health issues and pose a risk to themselves or others. After the incident, the presidential office released a statement calling for a thorough investigation and wishing Pei a speedy recovery. Political opponents were also united in criticizing the attack and called for proper response measures. Crime and terrorism aren't issues of political sides or party lines. This is absolutely intolerable. All of us must work together on preventative measures. The Democratic Party of Korea firmly condemns political terrorism and calls for a swift, thorough investigation by the authorities. The DP leader Lee Jae Myung also posted on Facebook saying no act of, quote, political terrorism should be tolerated and also wished Pei a speedy recovery. The news has sent shockwaves through the political community as the attack comes some three weeks after the opposition DP leader was stabbed in the neck during a visit to Busan. Prime Minister Han Duk-su on Thursday ordered thorough investigations into the case and called on authorities to focus on ensuring the safety of key figures, including lawmakers, to prevent similar crimes ahead of the upcoming April general elections. The police formed a dedicated protection team for key political figures, including party leaders, following the assault on the DP leader earlier this month. This is a departure from the usual protocol, where personal security teams are typically deployed for such individuals only during the official campaign period starting 14 days before an election. Shin se Arirang News. The South Korean national football team stumbled into the knockout phase of the AFC Asian Cup after drawing 3-3 with Malaysia on Thursday in Qatar. The South Korean midfielder Jung Woo Young's header gave the Tiger Warriors a 1-0 lead. However, Malaysia replied with two second-half goals. 
PSG's Yi Gang Yin scored his third goal of the tournament to level the match. Captain Son Eung Min converted a penalty four minutes into added time for the 3 2 2 lead, but Malaysia snatched an equalizer in dying seconds. The draw means the Tag Warriors finished second in Group E and faced Saudi Arabia in the round of 16. That match kicks off next Tuesday at 7 p.m. local time. On the cultural front, the Seoul Philharmonic, one of the oldest orchestras in Korea, recently appointed its new music director, Yav Van Sviden. He's holding an inaugural concert featuring pianist Im Yun Chan. A cultural correspondent, Song Yu Jin, has his story. Less than a month into his role as the music director of the Seoul Philharmonic Orchestra, Yav Van Sviden says he is already feeling at home. His connection with Korea goes back decades. My uh, big violin teacher was a Korean uh, man, Hyo Kang, who is still a very respected teacher at the Juilliard School. Uh, and I have very close contact still with him. Uh, but on stage, I've been working for many years with Korean artists. Before coming to Korea, the Dutch conductor led the New York and Hong Kong Philharmonic orchestras. Under his baton, the Hong Kong Philharmonic became the first Asian orchestra to be named Gramophone's Orchestra of the Year. Celebrating his new chapter in Korea, Seoul Philharmonic is holding a concert featuring pianist Im Yun Chan, the winner of the 2022 Van Cliburn International Piano Competition. It's been only a few days since they started rehearsing together, but they've already found a rhythm. I can smell, I can feel, I can, I can see also that the history of this man is hard-working, serious musician. And that is uh, always very touching and moving. The two-day concert will provide a glimpse into the maestro's vision for the Seoul Philharmonic. Performing Mahler Symphony No. 1 aligns with the goal of performing and recording all of Mahler symphonies within his five-year term. And I think it will make the orchestra, it will put the orchestra in an extra layer of color, emotions, strength in the future. For him, a top-tier orchestra consistently delivers excellence, and his aim is clear, to shape the Seoul Philharmonic into just that. I think that uh, maybe the road to heaven is maybe more beautiful than heaven itself. So being on the road with the orchestra is the big joy for me, and I hope also for the players in the orchestra. And he hopes the audience feels the same. We truly enjoy every concert that we play on stage. And so the enjoyment and the intensity, that is what we want to give the public. Starting with this week's concert, Van Sveden will be opening up a new era with the Seoul Philharmonic Orchestra. Song Yujin, Arirang News. Good afternoon. We had another freezing start to the day with cold alerts across Korea, but alerts should be downgraded or even lifted as the day goes on as we are slowly warming up. And the much-awaited above freezing daytime high greets us this afternoon in the capital after five days. Meanwhile, athletes in Gangwon-do should also notice a slight rise in the highs today, although Pyeongchang and Hwangseong will stay below freezing all day today. Highs are 2 to 5 degrees higher this afternoon, so we're topping out at 3 degrees, Daegu and Gwangju at 7 degrees Celsius this afternoon. Meanwhile, Gyeongsangdo and nearby areas are under a dry advisory. Bright skies are in store nationwide, but Jeju will be rather cloudy all day today. We'll have temperatures near the norms over the weekend under sunny skies in most parts of Korea, so please enjoy the weather conditions. Looking ahead, next week looks more promising with temperatures hovering slightly above seasonal averages.
That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. South Korean automaker Hyundai Motor has overtaken tech giant Samsung Electronics for the first time in 14 years in terms of operating profits. Last year, Hyundai Motor locked all-time high operating profits of 15 trillion won, or roughly 13 billion U.S. dollars, the highest among all Korean companies. Coming in second was Hyundai affiliate Kia, which saw its operating profits jump 60 percent to reach record $10 billion. Samsung Electronics is pushed down to third spot by a big margin, recording just half of Hyundai's earnings. With the evolving global trend and increased demand for eco-friendly cars, also bringing a change in the Korean business landscape. That is all for today. Thanks for watching.